Good morning, YouTube. Let's rise and shine. Episode number 38, The Lost Boys Movie Poster, the fourth installment. Yes, today we are going to be working primarily on Michael Second Coats. But before we get started, let's go ahead and run this intro. <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, I'd like to welcome you guys to the studio. Um, we are about to get started. My name is King Cavo, and we are going to be doing the second coats on Michael primarily today. And um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that I would tell you is that when it comes to painting on velvet, as, as I have discovered, not simply just from working on this piece, but from doing other pieces before that, is um, that you really have to be patient. You know, you, you really have to, you know, a lot of times, you know, when you're painting on a regular canvas, you, you gotta wait certainly for paint to dry and I'm working with acrylic paint and acrylic paint dries pretty fast. So, um, and then if on occasions I'll hit it up with a blow dryer and that'll dry it up even faster, right? Um, but you have to be patient in painting with velvet because you can't really always hit it like that with the, with the blow dryer when you have very liquid paint because you can blow the pigment underneath the velvet and it'll pool into another location, you know? And so really when it comes to certain things, it is important to kind of just let it dry. Now, one of the things that I did is I think maybe you might notice that now I'm doing a little bit different camera angle. I've set it up. And the reason why I have set it up is because for the most part, um, my first, my light gray kind of tones are already there and they're not going to move, right? So I can kind of paint over them and my paint really won't run. Um, I'm working with most excuse me, mostly 100% um, paint, which is going to require two or three more coats to get where it's 100% white. The, the velvet, even though it's got paint on it, is still going to absorb the 100% white. Until the, the fabric, until the nap is saturated with paint, it is going to be something that can be it still can absorb more paint until it's saturated it's always going to be able to absorb more paint regardless of how dry it is right the stuff that i painted um yesterday i can go over it today and i can wake it right back up by putting wet paint on top of it you know that's kind of just you know it's it's an interesting feature i guess I, you know i don't know with the velvet i guess that's kind of just the way it is um, so you kind of really have to sort of let the paint dry before you come back and, and do more work with it. Um, I've also discovered that if you paint with your stroke in a certain direction, that the nap is going to want to go that direction and stay. So if you want saturation, you're going to have to kind of go the opposite way and fill in the nap same thing you know until the nap is saturated you know it's always going to be able to absorb more paint that therein that this that place this place right here is the tricky part of as i have come to discover so far in painting portraits 
is trying to maintain tone. Um, right now, some of these tones, they look real bright, real white. You can see them. But then when I come back and I put this fresh white paint next to them, then you can see the difference. And I promise you, like I just hit up his cheek right now, that isn't as white as I need it to be. Right here on camera, it kind of looks good. It kind of seems like it's working, but really that's just like a fourth tone of gray before I even get to the white. So it require, it's gonna require a few more coats to get to where I have a fairly strong white. Um, but that's what it is. It's a layering process and um, it requires patience. Um, and this, is tricky because the hair um it, it 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 gets away from me at one point you know the the ultimate thing is trying to preserve the velvet the the pure velvet black and that's a trick when it comes to getting to those lightest tones that still aren't like black but they you know you still gotta put those tones in there you know sometimes it's better not to even put anything because you know it's better maybe to go to error on the side of darkness how about i put it that way um that's that that would be my main suggestion error on the side of darkness also be extraordinarily um patient and also i would say be extremely forgiving because Inevitably, if you are trying to paint velvet, you are going to make mistakes. Um, it is uh, unforgiving crucible. And just cleaning my brush, I've splattered paint on velvet that I couldn't get off. You know what I mean? It just, it's just one of those things. Um, and so that is what the challenge of painting velvet is it is about trying to to maintain the strength of the velvet and put the best image on there humanly possible and that's what it is that people appreciate in velvet art to be able to see where it takes time patience forgiveness of yourself and all kinds of things to produce something that is, like I've said before, at least good. Um, my my struggle in doing portraiture, no matter what it is that I'm doing, it if I'm with a you know a, a ballpoint pen and a notebook paper, you know I'm trying to get into the 90s. If I'm on a 30 by 40 canvas and I'm painting someone's uh, lost relative I'm trying to get into the 90s you know I need the painting I need that portrait to be 90% accurate because at 90% accurate you know who that is there's no doubt in your mind in that person who that person is and the 10% that is in the details that's really it it's in the details and then forgiving yourself for things that might be off because we're working with my human body right we are working with trying to get the image usually like in this case from a picture to to look at the picture so i'm taking in the image from the paper into my eyes into my brain and that process i don't know how well you are versed with how vision works but that vision is that image is flipped in my retina and then send down um, my um, optic nerve to my brain and my brain receives an upside down image. And so then my brain re-corrects this image so that I see it correctly, vertically. And so now I have now gone through just two or three different processes just to get the image in my head, right? Now I gotta interpret things Right. And so now, you know, I got to put my 50 plus year old eyes through these uh, reading glasses so that I can see details that, you know, I used to be able to see in my 20s like it was no problem. 
right? And to and see the interpret those details, right? And then I got to shift that over to a physical thing. And now I got to send that electric impulses and muscle memory and tell my arms what to do, my hand what to do, how strong to hold the brush, how much paint to load into the brush. Do I have too much because I don't want to drip? Do I not have enough? because I don't want it to just suck out all the paint and mean to have to come back two or three times. All these different things are going on in this process, right? And now I'm trying to get that to the point where now I'm on velvet and now I gotta fight through the nature of how the nap of velvet wants to behave, right? So there are way too many variables in my simple human body to get perfection, no matter what it is that I'm doing, right? I can always assume that the best that I could ever do would be 99 and then some micro fragments. You know what I mean? Have I ever gotten there? On some things, yes. On some things I have. In most things, I'm usually between the 97 to 98 percentile. You know, if I was painting on a regular canvas, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be about 97 to 98% accurate. This on velvet, I'm, I'm happy if I can get into the 90s because at this point, there are places where it is already not accurate. There are places where it is already not 100% to what it is in the picture. So it isn't 100% rendering of the por of the poster, right? Um, and then the portraits are, are, are a little off, you know what I mean? And so along with the, the velvet itself, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm happy if I can get it to be 90, you know what I mean? Really, to be quite honest with you, my expectation on this is really, you know, I'll be satisfied if I can get it 75% of the way. Because then what that means is that from six feet away, you look at it, it's gonna look like the poster from six feet away, right? But if you get up close and you start looking at the details, you know, David might not look necessarily 100% like David. He might look like Davey, you know what I mean? And Michael might be a little off. He might be Mike, you know what I mean? I'm gonna tell you right now, these little small faces, man, those guys, the little lost boys, you know, Marco and, and then, man, they, they are in trouble because it is going to be so difficult to get those details in there and maintain and still have something of a likeness, right? But we're not here to just try. We're here to, to do it. We're gonna push it and no matter what happens, we're going to, you know, we, we're gonna finish where we started. You know what I mean? And like I said, if I can get it 75% accurate, I'll be happy, but you know, we'll see where it goes. Um, what I would like to talk about today, now that I'm about halfway through yimmering and yammering, I would like to talk about my painting and why I choose to paint. Um, there are lots of things that I can do artistically. And um, I, can, I can do all kinds of things. And over the last couple of years, um, having relocated back home to New Jersey from uh, 30 years plus in Texas, um, I've, I've come back home and I've gone through some things because it wasn't under the best circumstances coming back up here. Um, I lost both my parents in 2020 and it has been a trick trying to get something of a normal life for not just me, but everybody, you know, everybody's had a rough one. Um, and in that time, um, having to start over with a lot of things gave me an opportunity to think about, you know, what, what I want to do and what I want to paint or 
or not paint, right? Um, I spent a little bit of time really giving some consideration to maybe doing ceramics. Um, and the reason why I thought about doing ceramics is because when I was in high school, I did ceramics and it was, it was fun, right? And I remember, oh, probably through, well, and most recently, it was probably about seven years ago was the last time I actually bought some clay. Um, but prior to that, it was probably another seven years before I had a, some, an opportunity to mess around with, with it. Um, I've always liked it. I've had a thing for it. You know, I can be a sculptor. I can do the three-dimensional thing. Um, now, I, I wasn't sure how I wanted to go. I went and I bought, you know, here recently, not recently, recently, but within the last two years, um, I bought some clay and I bought some uh, super sculpty and I was going to literally just make figurines and um, get into doing ceramics and going and maybe making mugs and, and having things fired and all this kind of stuff. And there was a, a time where I felt like that that was what I was going to do because uh, I had most recently had to destroy I don't know, 15 or 20 paintings that I did so that they couldn't be sold and made a profit on. I couldn't keep them and I couldn't give them away in the time frame that I had. And the only option that I had was to literally destroy them. And it was one of the most difficult things I ever had to do in my life. And I leaving that moment felt like I was never going to paint again because it was one of those things where first of all I felt like well, if I still had all those paintings well nobody bought them so there's there's a problem there in that nobody was buying the art right but then it was one of those things where you know it was difficult for me because all of those paintings were great paintings um, tremendous pieces of art um, and it was only one or two of them that were personal pieces that were never for sale in the, in the first place. Um, but just, just the idea, you know, of having to destroy my art, put a, a bad taste in my mouth about creating more paintings. And so I gave over to the idea of maybe doing ceramics and I bought some Sculpey and I started making some things and, and messing around with it. And it was fun. And, and I'm not saying that I might never do that ever again, but I am so much more the person that needs brush and paint and a canvas to express myself. Um, this is where I live. I live on canvas. And in this case, I live on velvet. But, you know, there are just so, so many things that I have always expressed in this two-dimensional form that I, I, it's, it's not that I can't find love and enjoyment for doing something like sculpting. Um, I have. I've made chess sets in wood. I've done all kinds of things. But I, I have always lived as a painter. Um, and so I paint. I, I destroy brushes, I empty paint tubes, and I fill palettes after palettes after palettes. I don't even buy palettes. I don't know if you noticed, but my palettes are those little styrofoam things that you get when you buy meat from the supermarket. I have gone through hundreds of those things. Um, I push paint. I'm a painter, I'm an artist, and that's what I do. And I would certainly find myself doing other things, but I will always come back to this. I, I'm painting velvet has been something that has rejuvenated something in me that I love. I love it because the challenge, you know, I can't go into this with ego or arrogance and it humbles me in a way that if I was painting this on a regular canvas, it wouldn't. And so I love this and I'm thankful 
for all my tiny little mistakes and all my little flaws and I just am going to continue to do this until it's done and like I said I, I'll, I'll love it and hang it in my room and it'll just be one of those things that you know you know like trophy on my wall type thing um, again I'd like to thank you guys for watching at this point I see that I'm up to like seven subscribers and <clears throat> thank you guys the magnificent seven um, I really appreciate it man um, without you um, watching you know I'd still be doing it don't think that I won't but subscribe new people subscribe because I'm gonna keep putting it out there I'm gonna give you something to watch you something to look at something to enjoy and if you don't want to hear me blather on um, turn the mute button on and play something else you know because after a while I get sick of hearing me talk and then if even if I shut up I'm talking in my head and then there's like thousand voices in my head always got something to say you always talk too much Whew. goodness gracious well let me tell you um this is just one of those things where in working on this i am definitely being pushed to my limits you know what i mean and it's it's exhausting it's tiring but it is one of the most enjoyable things i have done in quite a long while and i'm glad and i'm happy that i get to share it with you guys um so feel free to like subscribe and share and uh check me out when i do my next episode i believe that i will be working primarily on david next time around um i think i will be moving in a left to right manner to keep my hand out of the wet paint and smudging and smearing and stuff you know how it is um yeah note that finger technique don't be afraid to, to smudge and smear even here on the velvet you know what i mean you gotta get those gray tones where there's tones you know what i mean what do you think think that think that jacket it's all right let me tell you it, it's gonna need some more for sure but thank you guys for watching i greatly appreciate it um and uh that painting down there, that's the little bloodsucker. That's a vampire bat skull. Yeah, check it out. Art by Kavo. That's right. You need to get some velvet in your life. All right, guys, I'm out. Ouch! Watch where you're poking that, mister! Assimilate algorithm resistance is futile.